the situation is is totally totally intolerable uh, it, there's no relation to any international law being uh, being accounted for the state of turkey has for many many years played a, a very critical role a pivotal role uh, as part of for instance the us's uh, strategy uh, globally uh, it uh, works uh, in and through nato uh, in relation to a variety of conflicts so from a geopolitical point of view it, it, the impression is that the state of turkey plays this role and uses this role to effectively um, impede, effectively uh, su succeed in, in, in obtaining the acquiescence, the silence uh, of other states. Uh, if you look at the, the record of the European uh, Human Rights Committee or the, the, human, the European Committee on the Prevention of Torture, uh, what you can see are some movement, some attempts to address the situation, and then long periods of silence and no response. And uh, this is a situation that's really totally unacceptable. And I think that uh, what we have to, to do uh, and what many, many people and organizations around the world have been striving to do for years uh, is to continue to put pressure on uh, governments around the world to pressure the Turkish government, to put an end to the silence and to put an end to what is effectively complicity with an absolutely unacceptable situation. When uh, 30,000 people were, were disappeared, uh, torture, uh, and, and these crimes, these violations of very fundamental human rights were, were denounced publicly around the world. Yet during the whole time of the dictatorship, uh, it was impossible for the international, for the UN Human Rights Commission to address in a significant way uh, these crimes, these violations of human rights in Argentina. And, and why? Uh, so this is something we see over and over and over again. And indeed, it is the biggest challenge, perhaps, of the human rights uh, protection systems, whether they're internationally uh, or or regionally, the same, the very same states that erect these systems are the states that violate them. So here is the challenge uh, and the need for for popular organizations, for social movements, for governments, indeed, around the world to to step up pressure on on Turkey. Those are the kinds of actions that are absolutely essential for for the pressure that is needed, unfortunately, to be brought on, on all the states, and in this case, particularly the states of Europe, who have, because of Turkey's participation in the regional human rights uh, uh, system, uh, they're the states um, most well-placed uh, to, to put that pressure that is so needed on, on Turkey. The, the, the reality of, of a political prisoner who is now more than 75 years old as well, has been 25 years uh, in prison, uh, again, after having been kidnapped, having been transported illegally uh, from one country to another country, of having enduring uh, an absolutely irregular uh, trial. Uh, and supported for these 25 years, uh, totally inhumane uh, conditions uh, of detention. And as you say, these last three years, more than three and a half years now almost, uh, of absolute um, isolation and no community. And it's just totally, there's no, there's nobody anywhere, <laughs> there's no government anywhere in the world who should be able to accept uh, these conditions. They, they violate absolutely every understanding, every law, every norm. Perhaps, indeed, as the Turkish government uh, puts a lot of its resources, its budgetary uh, resources, into waging a war against the people, the Kurdish people, uh, obviously, that's going to prevent, that's going to present some economic uh, difficulties. So if, if there is a relationship between the crisis and, and the struggle of the Kurdish people, 
here we could see that the Turkish state can resolve that very easily by changing its policy towards the Kurdish people. Building peace is economically much more constructive, much more positive than waging war. Everyone is um, quite pessimistic about uh, what will happen and how life will become much more difficult for people over the coming months. But as long as we are willing to organize, as willing to to resist and to build uh, to build those struggles, then there is hope. There always must be hope.